So I have a half a cup of sugar, and of course this is how so much baking is, dry and wet, and then they come together. I have a half a cup of olive oil. That's kind of interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Those, you know, the Italians, we eat any chance for olive Forget oil. Forget butter, just go straight to the olive any oil. Any chance for olive oil, we go for it. And then a half a cup of Marsala wine. And this is something and to- And booze. <laughs> no, not always. <laughs> but this is a fortified wine, and actually chicken marsala, veal marsala, it's a wonderful, kind of almost nutty flavor that is great in baking, actually. And I keep it in the liquor cabinet, not for cocktails, but for cooking. All right, and then one egg. When I was writing uh, an Italian cookbook that had a lot of our family recipes in it, my dad said, if you do one thing, get Aunt Lena's cookies right. And the funniest thing is, and you, you can Are appreciate right? this. Well, when I went through my grandmother's recipe file, there was about six Torali cookies. One was Aunt Lena's, one was Carolina's, one was Mrs. Josephina's, one was this and that. And he yeah. said, it had a glaze on top, is what he said. Does can this you one have a glaze? Well, he said it had a glaze on top, but none of the recipes had a glaze no. on top. Here. Okay, perfect. Flour. Okay, so give me about a tablespoon and a half, please. Okay, is that like a yeah. walnut size So piece? what you're supposed to do is take it down like this and, you know, form it into a snake. And when I was a little girl, I remember doing this with my grandmother and my Aunt Lena. And I used to think I was like a master I'm baker. <laughs> and I then go like this. Look, mine's totally wrong already. What do you mean? I don't know, too thick. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> Try another one. I will. All right, one. Wait, aren't you a professional cook? I am a professional cook. It's hard to believe sometimes when you're doing something for the first time on television. It just goes to show you that whether you're a professional cook or you're a home cook or you're any kind of a cook, cooking is constantly evolving. You can always make a mistake. You can always make something yeah, perfect. Yeah, but it's okay, right? I mean, it's going to come okay. out fine, isn't it? They're going to be all right. Oh, look, yours look different than mine. Huh. So do you think you might make this with your daughter? She really likes to roll things, so actually so I think like that this hands-on thing is so great with the kids because... Oh, yeah. You get them involved in the experience, and that's really what it's all about. If you bring your kids into the kitchen, especially when you're doing something like this, how can you ruin this? I mean, You can't. You can't even overwork this. If you this, can which, mix it. <laughs> if you can if you mix can do it, that, you can do you it. You can do anything. <laughs> then you get a dough, and then you just, you know, actually let them make it in any shape they want. But if you were going to make it traditionally, actually I think mine are a little big and yours are a little small. All right, so... Hey, you know what? Getting creative. Getting creative. If your kids were here, this is exactly what it'd be like. So if I'm my like kids kid were here, here, it would be like one big giant one. <laughs> All right, that's going to cook at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes. You'll know when they're done because they'll be a little bit golden and sort of firm. And then when they cool down, we're going to get a glaze on them. Do you think you'll stick around for that? Totally, yeah. Okay, cool. Next, I'll turn plain old potatoes into a creamy Italian side dish. And later, speedy and tasty icing for my cookies. So we have our I cookies think it's delicious. here that we made while chatting and laughing and having fun. So it kind of looks like our kids made the cookies. <laughs> Mine, completely different. It doesn't matter. These it are doesn't. These are Aunt Lena's wine cookies. And my dad absolutely loved them. And he really, really, really wanted me to figure out how to make them. Because, you know, in the last 15, 20 years, we hadn't had them since Aunt Lena wasn't around. So we're just going to dip them. Can you even buy these? Can you buy these you at kinda Italian can. You can bakeries? Buy, you can you buy think? them at the bakery. And then but just don't. You should make your own because they were easy. You and look how easy it is. And then just, oops, sorry, <laughs> got some That's on your hand. Okay. You're just glazing. Now, I had um, mentioned before when I put Marsala wine in the batter that I like to keep the Marsala wine in there just for baking. But I have a confession to make. Sometimes Tipler. if you have a little <laughs> bit of cookie without the glaze on it, and you have a glass full of Marsala. Allow me. You can dip the cookie into the wine. That's the whole point. That's what these cookies were made to do, dip into wine. And sometimes you can, you know, have savory ones and you dip into red wine. You could, I mean, could you dip these in red wine? Sure, why not? But little Marsala, let's yeah, try you take see that. how it goes. I don't know. It's got the I, nicest scent. It's I like, think I like it in cookies, but I'm not sure that I like it for Okay, sip it and see if you like drinking. it. I'm just going to, you sip it, I'll dip it. I'm scared. I don't know why. <laughs> Mm. Oh. You know what? Actually, I do kind of like really, it. It's really, really, good. really good. I'm going to put this aside and keep dipping. I think it's it's that bad marsala, like chicken marsala from the 1970s, and you buy the marsala at the supermarket, and that's what I buy some imagine. good marsala. Yeah, don't buy that. Can you see why my dad liked this so much? Mm. The marsala in the batter with the olive oil, it has a, almost like a yeasty flavor. It's sweet, but not really, really sweet. And the olive oil and the marsala make it slightly savory, but it's just different. Yeah. And if you have an old school Italian friend, mm. 
or a grandmother or an uncle or somebody and you want to surprise them, you made this for them, I'll bet you that they would have memories of it somehow having been something they ate when they were growing up. Thanks for watching. Hungry for more? Click here for more great recipes and to subscribe, click here. Check back every week for more craveable recipes, leave a comment and tell me what you think. And don't forget, head over to our other channels for Everyday Food with Sarah Carey, Martha Stewart Weddings and the Martha Stewart Channel.